Hey folks, Chad Perkins here for Red Giant. In this tutorial, we're going to look at using OBJs in trap code form. An OBJ is a 3D model file used in 3D applications such as Maya, Blender, or Cinema 4D. These files can be imported into After Effects and used by trap code form as the shape of the base form. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a magic trick of biblical proportion. Now, in the early days of this feature, some users didn't have a 3D background and were just kind of stuck looking for OBJ files. But we're going to look at tons of great resources just built right into form now. We'll start in the designer and the OBJ presets there. Then we'll look at a hefty library of raw OBJ files included in form and the easiest way to access them. And we'll wrap up by importing an animated OBJ sequence and digging into the options you have when using OBJs in form. So let's get started. I have here uh, standard composition and uh, just form with its default settings. I'm gonna click the designer button to get access to the designer, which is a great place if you're new to using OBJs as base form. It's a great starting place. I'm gonna open up the presets section. I'm gonna click this little arrow here to lock this open. So in case I'm talking with my mouse and I move this all over the place, it doesn't automatically close on me. In this geometry section, you notice these presets are kind of categorized according to types of presets. In the geometry section, you'll have uh, different presets created with OBJs as the base form. So I'll click Icosa Spheres, for example, which I really like. Now I'm done with this uh, presets section, so I'm gonna click this arrow, close that up. Now if we click this little camera icon, we can click and move around and see that these particles are 3D. This is a 3D object that these particles are part of. They're using a custom sphere here, which we'll talk about how to do in an upcoming tutorial in this series. But it's important to note that the shape of the object is a 3D object. The base form is coming from an OBJ file. Now, just a few handy keyboard shortcuts for playing around with the camera view here. Once this icon is enabled, if I press the letter C, just as in the regular area in After Effects, it cycles through different camera modes. So I can zoom out now with this one, push it again, I get to orbit around, push it again, and I can pan left and right, up and down, and there you have it. So I'm gonna back out just a little bit and then orbit around this so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Now, what if I really like these little uh, sphere things, these custom particles, but I want to change the OBJ, the actual shape of the form, the structure. Well, I can actually go over here to the upper right by kind of where it says blocks and adjust the parameters of this shape. So with the type selected, the type of base form as OBJ model, we can go over here to the preset and you can see that the base form type is OBJ model. And here's the magic folks, choose OBJ. When we click choose OBJ, we get this collection, this library that comes with form, and we can choose one of these three-dimensional objects, which is really incredible. Maybe I wanna arrange these in a helix shape, so I can click on helix, click OK, and now we have this awesome spiral. Again, let me zoom out here by pressing the letter C on my keyboard till we get this zoom tool, back out, press C again to orbit, and there we go. So our particles with the same settings now just arrange with a different base form in a 3D helix shape. Be aware that when you are in this OBJ picker dialog, you could also add a new OBJ and import one from your hard drive into this collection, at which point it will become one of the presets down at the bottom that you can use at any time. I mean, as you can see here, there are tons of objects, weapons, there's a car, a bunch of fun things to play with. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel here. And I really wanna get into the details of using an OBJ. To do that, I could go down here, but I'm just gonna do this in the main UI of form. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel here. I'm gonna come back into my project panel and I'm going to import an OBJ sequence. Now to do this, I'm just gonna double click the same way I would import any other asset into After Effects. Now to create this OBJ sequence, I use a custom script for Maya that would allow me to take an animated object and export every single frame of the animation as a separate OBJ file. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on the first one and I'm not going to create a composition, but I am going to choose form to OBJ files sequence that will bring all of these OBJ files in as a sequence and keep my animation. And I'll go ahead and click open. 
Now it does. It just says OBJ here. If I double click this, it'll say OBJ for use with trap code. So what I'm going to do is come down here to, to another sequence that I have, and I've already applied form and done some other little decorations in the background and whatnot. And I'm just going to drag and drop this to add this to that comp. And obviously we don't really need this OBJ, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility of that layer and go back to form, go to my effect controls panel so we can adjust the settings. I'm going to open up base form. I'm going to change base form from box grid to OBJ model. It will go black or blank. That's totally, totally normal because it's basically waiting for input as far as which OBJ you're going to choose for the base form. I could click choose OBJ and get to the same picker that we saw before with the same exact options and this big library of uh, models here to choose from. But if I want to use my own, and in this case I do, I want to go down to the uh, bottom of the base form section to OBJ settings, which again are only active when OBJ model is chosen from the base form drop down here. But that being the case, I can go down to OBJ settings, 3D model drop down, and I'm going to choose in this layer in my composition this uh, OBJ sequence here. And there it is. There's my awesome copter. I can go ahead and adjust the Z position if I want to uh, bring this a little bit closer. I can also use a comp camera, but I'm gonna avoid that for the time being. Now, my two favorite options here, this is so amazing. I can choose where I want to get the particles from. So I could put particles on the vertices. I could put particles on the edges. I could put particles on the faces, or I could fill the entire volume with particles. Now, as I've played around with this and experimented, there are times when there's just one that just works. It just, it's perfect for the model and the density of the geometry. It just works perfectly. For this one, we have a couple action options, actually. I like edges and volume. I'm going to leave it set to volume for right now. It's a little bit uh, dense. A lot of times it comes in as like solid white. So what I want to do is go over to the particle section. And I'm going to kind of keep going back and forth between the particle and what the particle looks like and the OBJ settings here. So what I want to do is change the color from white to like a techie blue to match our scene here. Now, this is actually the color that I kind of want it to be, but because the particles are in add mode by default, then as we have a dense model like this, they're going to get a lot brighter and the big pockets of white and stuff like that. I don't necessarily want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually pick a much, much, much darker and more desaturated color. And then as these colors are these, as these particles kind of um, add on top of each other, they'll be the right color that I want. So again, this looks way too dark, but because of the add blend mode, it's gonna be just right. So I'm gonna click okay. And let's go ahead and increase size random. And that's going to, again, randomize the size of each particle, which has a tendency to lower uh, the apparent opacity because these particles are getting smaller. It doesn't make particles bigger than your size. It makes particles randomly smaller than that. And I'm also going to uh, increase opacity random, which does the same thing, but with opacity. And now we have something kind of cool. I might want to make these particles a little bit bigger. I could say maybe three or something. And maybe I'll go back to my color and maybe not make these quite so dark after all. And we have a really cool looking model here. I'm just going to adjust this on Y rotation. And we have this helicopter made out of particles. I mean, how cool does that look? That's awesome. And because this is an OBJ sequence, the animation that I created in Maya with the propeller spinning shows up here inside of After Effects. Now, one of the things I love, again, about this is in the OBJ settings, there's particle density. So by default, it's at 100%. But if I want more particles, I could actually take this above 100% and add more particles to make this more dense. Or I could take this down and just have little bits and pieces here. So it's not as dense. So it doesn't have to be, like if you choose uh, vertices, for example, it doesn't have to be you know, one particle per vertex, and you could actually go above that if you wanted even more dense, which is awesome. Again, I like edges here too, so I could uh, set this here, maybe take down the uh, particle density, and uh, that's looking pretty awesome.
Now, I really like the default settings here where invert Z is off and normalize and ignore imported UVs are checked. But if you are having problems with importing and that process of bringing in models and things aren't working quite right, you can uh, enable normalize, which will give you kind of like a different way of interpreting your model. Invert Z flips it and ignore imported UVs. Sometimes when you have UVs, apparently there's some weird thing with the mesh that can happen that can cause it to be misinterpreted when it comes in. So usually this is checked and usually that's a good thing. Now, if you wanna speed up or slow down the speed at which your animation sequence and your OBJ sequence plays back, you can adjust that with sequence speed. You could also offset the sequence if I want this to start at a different place or be at a different frame in a different spot, I adjust that with sequence offset. Now, that's basically it, but keep in mind that we could take this a lot further and use all of the form tools that we're gonna be looking at in this series with this OBJ model. So for example, we could go into disperse and twist and disperse the particles a little bit and create a little chaos. Maybe we put a little wiggle expression on this disperse and twist so that it randomly kind of like disperses or whatever, like it's a broken up signal. Maybe we use the fractal field that we'll talk about in the next tutorial to uh, randomize the size or the opacity of these particles. When I was playing with it, I decided to add a camera and animate the camera around. I mean, again, the possibilities are endless. Thanks again for joining us, folks, and we'll see you in the next one. Shout out to Pond5 for all the super dope music I used in this tutorial.